Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my collection of beautiful rocks and minerals, which I have prospected from across the United States and other countries, type in on YouTube, Rock and Mineral Identification, followed by my name, Frank Riser, space capital M period, capital S period. Riser is spelled R-E-I-S-E-R. I encourage you to watch my videos on geology and rock and mineral prospecting and get out there into the field yourself and prospect for those beautiful rocks and minerals. You can support my channel on Patreon. On Patreon, simply type in my name, Frank Reiser, M period, S period, and I appreciate your financial support. Your contributions allow me to buy more materials to bring you fascinating science demonstrations. Today's demonstration is on biology. We're going to be looking at the cross section of a leaf under the microscope. So let's get to the demonstration. This is a leaf cross section. It's cut, a leaf is cut through and into half, and we're looking at the thin layer of the leaf that is cut in two, not on the surface, but on the cross section. And notice the parts of the leaf with the different types of cellular structure are all lab labeled. The waxy cuticle covers the plant's leaves and reduces desiccation or water loss from the plant. The epidermis helps the plant retain water. The epidermis is a one cell thick cellular layer that secretes a waxy substance that is the cuticle. In woody plants, this tissue is more corky and stiffer. There are small openings called guard cells or stomata that cover the surface of the leaf. The stomata open and close to release water and gases from the plant. Stomata are produced in pairs with a gap between them that forms the stomatal pore. The stomatal pores are the largest when water is available and are closed when water is not available. Photosynthesis relies on the diffusion of carbon dioxide from the air through the stomata into the spongy mesophyll tissue. Oxygen produced as a byproduct of photosynthesis exits the plants by means of stomata. When the stomata are open, water is lost by evaporation and must be replaced by means of the transpiration stream with water taken up by the roots. The transpiration stream is the flow of water through the plant from the roots to the leaves by means of the xylem vessels. Xylem are bu vascular bundles that conduct water from the roots of a plant up through the entire plant to the leaves. Nutrients are transported from the leaves down to the roots of plants by the vascular bundles called phloem. The palisade mesophyll layer is where most of the photosynthesis occurs in the leaf by means of chloroplasts. To maximize light absorption, the palisade cells are closely packed together. The spongy mesophyll allows the interchange of carbon dioxide that are needed for photosynthesis. The spongy mesophyll cells are not as likely to go through photosynthesis than those in the palisade mesophyll. Now, you probably have seen maple trees tapped on their bark by a opening that acts or looks like a faucet and what happens is when a hollow tube 
is inserted into the phloem of a maple tree, you get maple syrup that comes out of it. That's transportation of nutrients and water from the phloem down through the plant. Let's look at the cross section of a, mi of a leaf under the microscope. And here we are. This is on 100 times magnification. 400, this is on 430 times magnification of the leaf under the microscope. High power. I'm going to switch to lower power and focus in on the cells again. Now we're under low power or 100 times magnification. This is the cross section of the leaf. And you can make out the different regions of the, of the leaf. You can see once I get it focused, that at 6 o'clock you have the waxy cuticle, then the cellular layer behind that is the lower epidermis, and then we enter into the spongy mesophyll. Above the, the spongy mesophyll, up here, is the palisade mesophyll. Then you have the upper epidermis and finally the waxy cuticle. This is a cross section of a leaf under the microscope. But this is, this is, this is not the only cross section of a leaf under the microscope that I have. I have this. Here's another leaf cross section. It's a smaller leaf. And here we see the palisade mesophyll, spongy mesophyll, xylem and phloem vascular bundles and the rest of the tissues. You have the epidermis and the waxy cuticle on the outside of the leaf. Here, the phloem observes as large cells. This is a photograph of a deciduous forest. And you can see all of the deciduous leaves on the trees. Deciduous forests are at lower altitudes and further away from the North Pole because pine trees do best in cold conditions, whereas deciduous trees, such as their tropical rainforest, enjoy warmer habitats. But look at all of these millions of leaves. And think about the trillions and trillions of these cells 
and a cross section of the leaf that exists all with a specific function and shape to them. How can anybody deny the existence of God when they see such intelligent design and engineering that has gone into creation? For this cannot be an accident. Too much intelligent design and engineering and God's cellular structures of plants, let alone animals, fungi, monarins, and algae. And this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals, always reminding you, in order to find those beautiful rocks and minerals, you only have to do one thing, and that is to keep looking down.